On this episode of The Spirit Stories, we are investigating the Canton, South Dakota Hiawatha Asylum, a mental institution designed specifically for America's Indian population. The asylum opened its doors in 1902. When it closed in 1934, the asylum had served over 300 patients. However, once an inmate was admitted to Canton, there was no way out other than death. Over 120 inmates died behind the asylum walls. When I was a very young child, I realized I could feel, hear, and see things that others could not. Paranormal phenomena is occurring all around us as spirits are interacting with us in our human realm. My name is Kalena Allo Adams and I am an intuitive medium. My quest is to bring an understanding for myself and for others as to what it is that spirits are trying to communicate to us. Join me as I interact with spirit and gather information so that I can share with you the spirit stories. This episode of the Hiawatha Insane Asylum began a month prior to us filming in Canton, South Dakota, as the spirit of an Indian man came forward the morning we were getting ready to go film on a different episode in southern Utah. Weren't you telling me that you were visited by somebody this morning? I got a visit by a a man with long hair, and it looked like an Indian. So I believe that they know we're coming, and they have a story to tell. After filming a late night investigation, we had retired to the hotel and I had gone to bed and was asleep when I received a frantic phone call from my crew telling me to come to their hotel room as fast as I could. They had been getting the equipment ready for the next day of filming when they caught voices on the spirit box wanting to tell their story and asking for me by name. A spirit box uses radio frequency sweeps from over 250 radio stations, along with white noise, which seem to give spirit the frequency they need to be heard. I'm really looking forward to coming and investigating that Hiawatha. I'm, I know there's you, there's so many spirits crying out for their story to be told. This is a big story. I was gonna go to bed, but I'm up here to talk to you instead. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. <laughs> like, do you need us to tell your story? Mike. Mine? How long were you at Hiawatha? Two. Two? Two years? Is the woman's name Maud? Maud. Maud Magpie. <laughs> what can I help you with? What do you What do you want me to know? The cemetery was a long half mile away from the hospital. So during the frozen winter months, the bodies of those who died were placed outside the back doors in the snow. When spring came, those bodies were then buried exactly where they lay and were lost from any official records. Are you one of those that were lost and buried in the snow? Yes. After the Hiawatha Asylum closed, The grounds remained the property of the city of Canton. The hospital was torn down, and the city built the Hiawatha Golf Club. Sadly, the asylum cemetery remains between the 4th and 5th fairways, where golfers still play through to this day. People are golfing on top of you? Yes. Did you hear that? They're golfing on top of them. On top! Were you put into the hospital because you wouldn't conform to the white man ways? Yep. Was there a big cover up?
A story is missing from most history books. The story of the Hiawatha Asylum, the first and only federal insane asylum created solely for American Indians, located in the tiny town of Canton, South Dakota. The Canton Asylum opened its doors in 1902, when the United States' official Indian policy was assimilation. Many people believe the government used the Hiawatha Asylum to jail Indians who wouldn't conform. Indians didn't understand the kind of conformity they were to abide by. They didn't understand why they couldn't speak their tribal languages. They didn't understand why they had to attend Christian church and stop performing their Indian spiritual ceremonies. They didn't understand why they had to change. Many men, women, and children from all over the country were placed there, not because of mental illness, but because they fought with a white man or agency. While we were gathering information on the Indian Asylum, we were warned that the residents of Canton did not take kindly to anyone asking questions or investigating this story. Understanding that no one is to blame, we quietly and respectfully entered town in the evening, and under the cover of the dark night, we went to the cemetery on the golf course to conduct our first spirit box investigation and try to connect with any spirits. We are here very respectfully to tell the story of what happened here. We are trying to understand what it is that the spirits want us to share. For a month now, we, I've had a spirit with me excited that we're coming to start reporting on this story. If we can have people step forward one at a time, come and if there's something you would like to share with us, we would like to help you have a voice. Should we go ahead and turn this on and see if someone has something they want to share? Step forward and share some things that you would like us to know. We would like to um, interview some people who have information to give you a voice. Talk. <laughs> if nothing else, we're going to um, share a lot of history and we're going to share this story. The conditions at the Hiawatha Asylum were horrific. The faculty operated without power or indoor plumbing. They were exceedingly understaffed, and staff lacked medical training, supervision, and they were utterly ignorant of native languages and customs. Physical abuse was used as a means of controlling patients. Hiawatha staff restrains many patients with metal wristlets, camisoles, and shackles with iron chains. Patients live in squalor. Food is not fit for human consumption. Windows are sealed shut, and because chamber pots are left full of human waste, the air inside the asylum is noxious. Other patients have been locked away in isolation for years at a time. The asylum has admitted native children, often without parental consent. There have been several babies born here as well, although they did not survive. Lizzie Vipont, a Paiute woman who had been diagnosed with epilepsy and dementia, became pregnant during her incarceration. She delivered a baby boy on November 8, 1906. At just under the age of one, the baby was taken from Lizzie and transferred to the South Dakota Children's Home. Sadly, he died a short three months later on December 16, 1907, from unknown causes. 
Can a woman step forward? The female energy that I keep feeling. Can you step forward? Hello? Is this Lizzie? Lizzie, your name keeps coming up and it's kind of... Me. Lizzie, how long have you been here? We'll have to look and see how long she was in the asylum before she died. Yeah. One. Yep, your baby was a year old when he died. Do you know what happened to your baby? Kind of like to understand what happened to your baby. Oh. Oscar S. Gifford, a U.S. representative and a former mayor of Canton, became the first administrator of the asylum. He was not a licensed physician or psychiatrist. And amid rumors of patient mistreatment, Gifford was replaced by psychiatrist Harry Hummer in 1908. On average, there were four patient deaths every month during the 30-year operation. To this day, there is no record as to why any of these patients were placed there. Got really quiet all of a sudden. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Paiute? East. East. Uh. Sounded like an Indian word, kind of. Suffer. Suffer. No, there really was a lot of suffering there. We're going to switch out boxes. We're in the car outside of the cemetery. Try, we're being very respectful to your resting place. Are you hearing something on the outside of the car? Yeah. Cars. I'm hearing breathing in my ear right here. <laughs> okay, who's in the car here? Stop. There was breathing over here and something pushed. Who? Who is here? Yes, we, we hear you. We recognize you. Me? Who is me? Are you trying to get our attention? Are you trying to scare us? I can hear that male voice. It keeps coming through, but I can't understand you. I kind of feel like we probably should not, we should move the car. I agree. Should we go? We are at the original site of the Hiawatha Asylum. Are there any spirits here who, who died at Hiawatha Asylum? Here? And you were not buried in the cemetery? You were buried outside of the cemetery? How come do you stay here? 
that was interesting English I just used. <laughs> Why do you stay here? Do you feel like you have to stay here? Are you here with your body? Are you here to share your story? If so, how can we help you tell your story? Or are we doing that right now? You know, it's the original space that they would have died in. <coughs> when? So maybe what I could do is I could leave for a little bit. Okay. So see if they'll communicate with you. All right, go for a walk. It's really quiet. That said, outside now. In 1911, the Canton Asylum established normal visiting hours. Dr. Hummer showcased the native patients in special areas of the hospital for the amusement of university students and paying customers who were invited there from all over the country. The patients were also exploited financially by making hand-beaded trinkets. Various sizes of decorated Indian dolls, weaved baskets, and other items that were made available for resale to the public. And we are at a school building where they used the building material from the Hiawatha Indian Asylum building after they tore it down. They brought this, uh, the, the bricks, I believe. There was this rocks as well at the bottom. But we heard that there's energy attached to this, so I'd like to do... Human. Human. I would like to do a spirit box session here and see if any spirits is attached to any of this building material. Any spirit that would like to come forward and, and talk. Come talk into this little box. Don't be afraid. This will help you form words. We just came from the library where we held some dolls that were made in the asylum. We saw some pictures, photographs from the lady who, Gertie, who worked in the kitchen. And she had some of the patients there that helped. We saw a painting that Lizzie did. We were wondering if it's Lizzie Vipont, but they, she had signed something to Clarice. Is there any of that energy here? Would you like to communicate with us? Any women? Any energy at all? Very quiet. Hello, is there any spirit energy here associated to this building? I heard a man's voice. Did any of the spirit energy come with any of this building material from the asylum? We're going to go back over to the cemetery and Take a drone and get some aerial pictures we would like to see. Mark, we want to see the marked graves that are there, but also we're trying to find unmarked graves and we would love any spirit help that we can get. We're looking for a hill behind the cemetery, we believe it's north. 
of the cemetery that the families stayed at. The families of patients in the insane asylum stayed there, camped there, and tried to get a glimpse of their loved ones. And a lot of them died there and froze in the winter, the bad conditions. And we know that they have been buried there by the farmers who lived in the surrounding area. Continue talking to me, the male voice that keeps coming through. What is your name? Dave. Name? Yes. Can you tell me your name? Any spirits here? Were you buried outside of the cemetery in unmarked graves? I think we're going to just move on and go over to the cemetery. So any spirits that are here are invited to come with us and help guide us if you would like, help share your story. Okay, thank you. Come with us. There's the hill to the north of me right now where the family members would camp to watch. North. Okay, we want to go up there and see if we can get some messages of the family's names that are buried up there. Do any of you know if your family members are up there? Yes. Yep. Yep. What's their names? Last name of your family? There's so many bugs here. It's crazy. What is your name? Steve? Is that Steve again? Or something like that. So did someone send a curse of bugs to anyone who comes inside of the cemetery? Curse? Curse? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anyone want to step forward and have anything to say? session. There's too many bugs. Mm. One may wonder what methods were used to committing Indian people to this asylum. What constitutes insane among Indian people? Blame does not fall on any one person or groups of people. The Indian patients suffered and many died in near silence. In 1933, the Hiawatha Asylum for Insane Indians was closed, and the remaining 71 patients were transported by train to the St. Elizabeth Hospital in Washington, D.C. In honor of the Indians who died at the asylum, I am happy to know that in 1998, the Hiawatha Asylum Cemetery was listed on the National Register of Historic Places.